Hi, Liz. It's so nice to have you in the studio. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, it's also really, really great because you're obviously a, an extra university student, so it's great to have you almost back in the city virtually. Yeah. Um, one of the things, we have got some great questions that have come in for you. Uh, one of the ones that I wanted to ask was, the, the statistics that you showed are pretty impressive. Like, but for, you know, what has been the most challenging thing driving the program forward that you have found? Um, I think the most challenging thing is, is sometimes, you, not that I'm a victim of your own success, but obviously every year there's a lot of pressure on us to make the statistics better. And I think especially this year, um, I sort of just re-benchmarked everything. And I was expecting our, to be really honest, I was expecting a female head cap to go down. It's been a really tough year for a lot of people. I mean, technology as a business sector is massively increasing, as I'm sure everyone here knows. And I think at some point, you know, if you don't keep succeeding, people are like, oh, what's, what's the value of you? And you always feel like you're having to prove your own, your own value, um, especially in very challenging times. Um, so I think that's been a very, very challenging thing. Um, in other ways, that's been quite good. It's quite nice to sort of having to be very creative. That's why we're so big now. That's why when, when, when COVID hit, essentially we were in a phase of helping lots and lots of clients and that just obviously dried up overnight. People had were in survival mode. So what we did was focus on supporting schools because we realized that's where the great seed was, is there was suddenly a lack of technology education. That's why we built a pipe course. So I, I think that's the thing is balancing, uh, having to constantly improve with sort of knowing actually when you only have 70% of the technology workforce is female, there is going to be a point when there is a seeding. We're, I think we're going to hit it very soon. That's why we're now focusing on working collaboratively across the entire industry and schools, because until we get more girls interested in technology and more the university level uh, women interested in technology, we're, we're not going to go any further. One of, the, one of the questions actually we've had in from uh, one of the delegates, Juliana Turnbull, asks, Talking about COVID in terms of the you know the huge disruption, you know what have you seen? What were the biggest changes in 2020 in this area that you've seen? Um, yeah, so for us, obviously the first one was sort of we just went straight into supporting schools as much as we could, whether that was around uh, donations of laptops, uh, whether that was as I said we, we wrote sort of lesson plans that were free for sort of um, schools. So again, that that Python was just it was just put on YouTube. It was delivered sort of free twice a week. Um, again, about accessibility of education, did you recognise that, you know, for some pupils they had literally no education for several months. Um, for us, it was around obviously community as well. So we did a lot of pivoting away from sort of what was very formal to just trying to make sure people felt supported. So we have a month, we had a quarterly newsletter, we then upped that to monthly and it went from being very, this is the successes this person has done to, well, what do people do a day in the life of? And it became a lot more sort of community focused. We did coffee roulettes, so we started pairing people up randomly across the firm, and this allowed people to just meet people and just have a time to just connect, and those have been hugely successful, and those will go forward. I mean, KPMG's attitude now is it's not it's not where you work, it's how you work, so I think these things are very important. Um, and, yeah, there's been a lot of priority around sort of people's well-being, and I think I, as I said, this is the side of the desk where everyone except me. So I was very much like, if you need to take a step back, please do. It's you are the most important thing. Um, but yeah, we, we pivoted absolutely everything virtually in about the space of a month, and it's been very successful. The only thing that stopped for us was temporarily program recruitment, but I think that's, that's very common in a lot of companies for, for a period of time. Uh, we've had another question come in from Rebecca. Uh, she said, this is so cool. <laughs> I'd love to know uh, how some of Liz's knowledge can be applied to those of us who are self-employed. Yeah, I think self-employment, oh, that, that's quite an interesting one. Obviously, this is around sort of trying to change structural things within very big companies. Like, I mean, KPMG has existed for like 150 years in the UK. Um, but I think self-employment is quite important, especially for, you know, for women. It's all around sort of knowing your worth, sort of working in an industry which is very male-dominated. Um, I think any if any any advice that we have, it's it's around having that. Mentoring doesn't have to be internal, Like there's lots of mentoring programs that you know you can join just as yourself. You don't have to be part of a company. So I definitely would recommend sort of finding one of those. And it's actually very good to sort of meet other people that are in the same situation as you. Just sometimes it's great to hear someone else has been going through the same things you're going through, even if they're negative, because I think especially if you're self-employed, you can sometimes not wonder if it's just you and actually it's you're the problem which is definitely not if you're experiencing sexism or anything like that um so that's definitely the recommendation i would have um 
and even if it's you know the, the things that we have which is i'm sure if you're self-employed you work from home quite a lot so the things that we've introduced around sort of forming communities out you know in the home place i'm sure are very valuable and actually i'm hoping that if you are self-employed and have worked from home you're finding it easier now to find communities because you are now the normal and people who are in offices is now sort of becoming a bit more unusual especially for the time um and in terms of sort of supporting um Pupils in the next generation, there's loads of organisations out there. I, I live in Cambridge currently, and there's sort of like we have Cambridge Science, for example, if you go in. So, definitely recommend trying to find these sort of organisations who aren't tied to companies to go and support and do that because it's really valuable that you are the role models for the next generation. We always say the cliche is you can't be what you can't see. And I think that is really, really important for groups who don't have that sort of, you know, 30%, they can't look into a, a career like science and STEM and see sort of themselves very easily to go out there and be that person. On that, on that point, you make about um, the, the importance of, of mentoring. Uh, another question uh, from Lisa Fee Crump saying, this sounds amazing. Real organizational change being driven. Clap, clap, clap emojis. Uh, re replicate that. But I'd love to know more about what your mentor-mentee training looks like. So any sort of key standout kind of points on that? Yeah, um, it's kind of in a bit of an evolution. So um, to start with, it was literally just sort of self self govern sort of um, training that you would take themselves through. We've now got sort of online training that we do which is called degree pathways that's just our online training course we have ones for mentees and for example some topics is how to have a how to do active listening for example is one of them how to have successful conversations what is the grow method um we are changing this because our survey results literally came out this week and um people still don't know where our online training is but i feel like this is a standard sort of you've got to lead a horse to water sometimes so what we're doing is changing all of our online training to classroom training so we're going to give people the option so if people like to do things in their own time that's great but we're going to do face-to-face -face training again virtually so we're going to have new training this year recognizing that um COVID's changed people's communication styles we're going to do new ones as i mentioned around how to have successfully communicate in a virtual world how to be a mentor how to have successful mentoring conversations so how to how to help set stretch goals and things like that so we're going to do these quarterly um, allow people to sign up so these are very you know engaged training sessions because the reason we think a lot of mentoring programs fail and i'm sure lots of people here have had a mentor and it's it's just not clicked it's just not fizzled out it's because it's just not active enough there's not enough push um and that's what we really plan on doing to make sure people still get benefit from this program and there are people that have been on that since 2015 and they changed their mentor maybe a couple of times they've been promoted a couple of times but they still hopefully get the benefit and each year we see what we want and then build something based on that uh, following on the mentoring, it seems to be a very popular topic. Uh, Andy has said, the mentoring program sounds brilliant. What have you found to be the key advantages of it? And do you have to pl any plans to extend it outside of KPMG? Yeah, so I think the key advantages of it is, um, so ours is, again, it's, been, it's quite a focused mentoring program. It's not just a general one. Like day one, it's always billed as this is for career advanced, but this is for someone who wants to get ahead in their career. Um, but again, as I said, if you if you want to go onto this because you want to comment abroad, that's fine. But we expect you to go in with a clear set of goals. Um, and yes, we do have plans. So we have delivered it to a couple of clients. We're in conversations with others. And we have experience of delivering it externally to other companies um, as part of KPMG sort of um, client based offerings. And again, we've delivered it to KPMG entities abroad. So essentially, we don't copy and paste it. We do adapt it based on people's needs. Um, and it's it's been successful there. So, for example, when we took it to um, the Netherlands, something that's very successful in the UK is it is mentee-led pairing. So, mentees pick their mentors and do no force matching. However, the Netherlands said that due to sort of um, cultural reasons, they wanted to do the pairings themselves, and they sort of did a bit of a hybrid model of that. So, it's never a case of we just force people to do it our way. We listen and sort of respond to what people want and sort of cultural differences or needs and um, so for example KPG Australia also have it as well they had a real problem with their managers um, leaving so they specifically introduced it just for their managers so it's a way of sort of retaining managers in KPG Australia um, and they successfully implemented that into their all of their offices in Australia. Cool. So a question for me Liz um, what about resistance to change so uh, does that come more from you know people sometimes as, as such blockers or knowledge or is it more about processes and systems? Um, I think we've 
never really had that resistance to change KPMG. I think KPMG technology is it's quite a new bit of KPMG. So I think in some ways that's quite beneficial. So there is very much a culture of sort of new ideas are always accepted. You know, it's if you want to set up a group like IT in the future, you're never told, no, you can't do that. Like this this since especially since March 2020 and the George Ford instance in America, we've had a sort of a boom in IDSE groups at IDA, KPMG technology. Um, and all of them have been told absolutely this is this is the support you need to get going. I think if there is any resistance, sometimes it's because our systems are quite old, in the sense of which they were set up to um, they were set up in a different sort of world. And again, we are updating all of them. But again, updates take time, as I'm sure everyone here knows. It works in STEM. So, but I've never, we've never found any resistance to things. Sometimes, and this is why data is quite important. There'll be some departments who just don't see the issue. And it, it's not from a sign of maliciousness. So when we're trying to roll out to new area of KPG, the mentoring scheme, they go, well, why do we need this? It's just for women. It's not fair that the men can't have it. And then we go in and go, I kind of see where you're coming from. You've got, for your graduates and your assistant managers, you've got an even split. They're like, but you only have 10% email managers. And then they look at that and go, oh, okay. Yeah, we've got a problem. And yeah. then it's fine. It's why data is really great to tell a story. Um, you yeah, know, absolutely, we've never had any resistance. Um, and I know some places have had a bit more, and it's we do everything we can to make sure we can support them in that way. Um, I've got a question for you, just asking what has been the most rewarding part of, of driving the program forward and, and implementing this change, I guess? Um, the most rewarding part of this, um, that is a really, really great question. I think for me, I really love all the stuff we do around schools. I think it's really, that's really, really rewarding. We have a really in-depth juniors program. So we have everything from bringing girls in at year 10 to coming for a week to connect our Canary Wharf office, to working with primary schools, to our coding course. And I think it was really rewarding at seeing that blossom. Um, they were recently um, won a national award for that, which was like my life mission for that team for that year, because they just weren't getting the recognition as a, as a compared to say our mentoring team because sometimes it was hard to companies sometimes don't necessarily see the benefit of working in schools because it's a very very long term it takes a long time to get the rewards of working in schools so it's great to see the recognition of why it's now so important to work with the next generation who actually you're only ever going to see the benefits in 10 years time and it, it's been great to see girls now applying to KPMG who did our juniors program say five years ago and I think that's really really important to see or people sending us emails saying, oh, I'm now in my second year of university, I'm doing a year in industry and I'm applying to KPMG. And actually for us, we don't actually care if people apply to KPMG. I, might, I mean, I shouldn't say that, but for us, it's about ensuring women work in the technology industry, wherever that is, whether that's us or someone else. It's about ensuring that we don't have opportunities shut to girls when actually doors should be open to them. Nice. And, and on that point about um, candidates and going for roles, you know, that's such a huge complex area in terms of, you know, advice and skills and, 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 and confidence and, and, you know, when you're taking those initial steps, is there sort of a piece of key advice, be that the skills or the, or the you know, openness to asking for support? What, what would you say on that? Yeah, I, I, we do, um, we have a couple of insight programs where like student group give that specific advice of how to navigate our, our system, <laughs> essentially. Um, I think the key bit of advice on that is and what I say, what Anna, who obviously founded IT's Future, who's my director, always says is, if you can show you're passionate about technology, that's the most important thing. Because we do recognize that, you know, the British education system doesn't set people up to naturally have an education in tech. Whether that's in GCSEs or A-levels, it's very unusual to do those um, subjects. So if you can just show you're passionate about it in whatever way, whether that's doing free coding courses online, whether that's reading technology books, that's all we really care about. because it's not typical and um, you know even computer science degrees are still quite quite a low number of uptake for men and women so it's all about passion for us and i think that's a really important thing at the end of the day if you're working in tech you need to be passionate and also willing to continuously learn because technology changes constantly so you know if you did your degree five years ago it's you know you've got to keep learning so those are the things that's most important to us fantastic uh, I haven't got any more questions. I think we're heading towards uh, the networking time. And, I, and, and thank you. I think there were a couple of technical issues there with the Wi-Fi, but um, we're back on. So, um, uh, no, Liz, it's, it's fantastic. I suppose a final thought for me then in terms of what's coming next then in terms of, you know, the thing that you're most excited about, perhaps in terms of taking this forward, the programme. Yeah. Way. 
I, I think for us, the next 12 months is we're definitely going on, like many places, a very, very big recruitment push. So we've got a couple of in-person events. We're going to be doing in-person events again um, from November, which would be great. But also, importantly, we're going to be ensuring that people who want to join us virtually will be able to do that as well, um, because we do recognise that virtual way of working is here to stay, and we know that's very, very important for those that have children or other caring responsibilities. Um, we're also going to be doing a lot more work with schools going forward, we're hoping to do quite a big competition this year, um, and just designed to get kids excited about technology. Um, and I think for us as well, there is going to be a real, real push around sort of ensuring that um, it's not just looking, we're looking at the intersectionality of this as well. I mean, we already have streams focusing on sort of BAME uh, women and disabled women, but we're going to do a lot more in this space and working across KPMG technology with the other IDSE groups I've briefly mentioned to ensure that we can support each other and ensure that KPMG technology, as our gender stats rise, everything else is rising at the same rate. So I'm really excited about what we're doing in this sphere. Fantastic. Well, Liz, thanks so much for kicking off the conference uh, right. in such style and such a, a, a you know, key discussion as well. So, and, and thanks everyone for putting questions in the chat as well. It makes it much easier for us up here. So, so Philippa, what's the plan for the next bit? I think we've got some networking next. Is that right, Chris? Yes, we do. Yeah. We do indeed. So <laughs> it's there on the left-hand side. We've got 15 minutes of um, networking. So it's through to around 11.15 and then head back to the main stage where we'll be setting out all the different things that are kicking off in the different tracks as well as here in the main stage. So Liz, thanks again so much for joining us uh, today. It was fantastic. Um, see people in the networking zone. Uh, and we'll be back here at 11.15. Thanks. Bye. Bye.